Can I be blah de blah 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 blah? Oh my god, can I get you to freak out? Well, would you look at that? Hey guys, Jake here. We're at Pear Tree Ranch and we're going to continue with Fenwick. So, real time, it's been about seven sessions. The first video we showed our first session with him, teaching him stand still, relax with your head down under perceived duress. You get to see him jump around and be bothered. We carried that on to going through the bare minimum. We've done first saddling and uh, tying around. What we're going to show you today is all of those things, how it's going, share <clears throat> how his owner's feeling about his progress, and then progress from there. And we'll continue to just bring you these update videos in progress so you can see his journey back towards where his owner could have some successful rides. Uh, we're going to put him onto this 22 foot rope. He's standing here, relaxed, tied, and his owner was here at the end of last week on Friday to see the progress of the first uh, week with us. And she was so happy she was in tears, um, which is uh, exciting for us and for her and for her horse. She was blown away by the fact that we were able to hard tie him, that we were able to hard tie him and wash him, have him stand still and all the work that we've done. Uh, so that was really exciting for us. And <clears throat> He continues to get checked out medically, so he just had some acupuncture at the end of the week. He'll have continuing chiropractic, and they found that he was testing a bit positive for um, some pain in the hocks. Uh, it's been over a year since his hocks were done, so they're gonna do this end of week, um, have his hocks re-injected to his maintenance. So he's 11 years old, and with his background, physically that's something that's acceptable to keep up maintenance-wise uh, from their perspective. So. That will be coming up for him. Uh, we've got the saddle out, we got the whips out, long sticky. We're gonna kinda get into this and show you what we've been up to and where we're going. Hey, buddy. <clears throat> Again, we use the 22 foot long rope on a horse that can kinda get bouncy and um, bothered gives me more rope to slip and slide and him more room he's a bigger horse and i want him to be able to have space uh, to move and while we get him back into physical shape we would slowly work to a shorter and a shorter rope we showed you last video his kind of reaction with some of this stuff and you can kind of see, so first shishi of the day, head down, deep breath, okay? And I showed the owner, she uh, was here, kind of try to sneak attack him. Can I be blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, can I get you to freak out? Okay, and can we <clears throat> catch him sleeping? And what's he gonna do when he gets startled? Because that's what this is about long-term is when he gets bothered in the past, he would, out of nowhere want to have an explosion. Well, again, we know we found out that some of that was tied to a medical issue and that's been since cleared up. But that doesn't mean that his mental and emotional about the things he was experiencing isn't still in there. So a part of preparing him for the future is, can we give him some tactics to do when he gets startled that's the opposite of what his DNA says, and let some positive training kick in there. From doing that standstill, we progressed to some forward. We talked about doing forward as a lateral movement along the fence, and then also forward on a circle. The first few days of working on this, I would put it, he sounded like a uh, fat kid in corduroy pants. Zit, 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 zit. Okay. Rubbing the boots together, he was interfere so much that he would rub those boots together. <clears throat> and that quickly has progressed to where he's doing that less and less, which is good. We also found that he had a very hard time maintaining 
a canner lead. And some of that can just be his mental and emotional state getting in the way. Some of it can just be his physical. So you can see he knows, and this was you know pre-us, he did a lot of time with, again, our buddy Tick Maynard. So he's got a lot of great groundwork foundation in there. But for him to be able to just lope off like that and take off and not lose the hind leg, he couldn't do that for the first few sessions. He would cross fire, he would take the outside lead, and he just was so discombobulated with that. Again, in my opinion, some of it was mental and emotional, some of it was just physical getting back in the scheme of things. We can hear all this hacking and the blowing and letting that out. He's feeling much better mentally and emotionally and physically as we've progressed into work. Keeping it simple where he could just get to a canner, no big deal, thoughtfully do it and not rush. We saw him in the first video. Do a lot of bouncing around, jumping around, excessive things. <clears throat> and now we've kind of gotten to where he can just do enough. Good job, buddy. Okay. So walk, track, canner, relaxed with his head down on a 12 foot rope. Now he can do it on. The distance that would be a 12 foot rope, I'm holding the 22 short. So that's working quite nicely. Again, that was something he had already kind of learned with Tick. He had nice feel on the circle. We just had to kind of get his feet and body a little more organized since all that time off and the injury and such. We're gonna go out here to the fence. I'm gonna do some sideways. When we started this, he had the idea of go sideways, but for him to lead with his nose and neck and put his head down, that was a fair bit different that we've progressed to being able to do now. Now, it's Monday, so he just had the weekend off. So if he has a little energy, I'm not going to be fretted by it but I like how quick he's kind of back to the expectation. Now you can see a little bit him stepping uncoordinated with his feet. And there we kind of got a nice rhythm and flow I can softly cluck to kind of encourage him to go. There, we're blowing out. And then once we can get him going, I started challenging him with, could I get you distracted and worried about something that isn't gonna run into you? So notice, this flag is out here slapping. This isn't getting any closer to him. So he shouldn't worry about it, okay? He shouldn't worry about it. Versus if I push in a horizontal plane, that's gonna get closer to him. So he needs to read the difference about me pushing towards him and speeding up versus this just out here making commotion, okay? And I like to see him look, ears forward, eyes forward, even considering stepping towards. And you can see if he's doing anything with his head and neck, he's considering relaxing that head and neck down. Okay, let's go the other way. Can I get you bothered with this? Or will you choose to get stronger onto the expected behavior, which would be forward down the fence, relaxed with his head down, turning into sideways eventually. That's a nice thoughtful movement out of him. Again, swooping through those turns. There you go.
and not getting bothered and needing to do excess energy when the flag is just making noise. Okay, moving on. Burpees. Can this horse just do our bare minimum groundwork list? And what does that look like? So we want to offer him the feel, and I'd like for him to follow that feel around there versus me have to herd him by slapping his neck with the rope. It took just a moment, but he kind of found his way there pretty quick. That was to the right. For him to have left bend was a big deal because of the injury uh, or impingement with the neck. So for him to bend softly and just turn around there to the left and not make a production uh, was, a, was a big deal. And again, the owner was very thrilled with seeing him be able to do that. Okay, last thing on the list that we haven't done yet is just relaxed, backing with his head down. And again, that was something that wasn't much of a deal. He already kind of had some of these good groundwork skills beforehand. So we've just continued to push him to understand more and have better commitment about not getting bothered by things and doing an excessive thing. It's okay for him to get startled, but I'd rather he stop, think, and then move versus explode, overreact, and then realize it was a leaf falling out of a tree. Okay. All right, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get the saddle on him. Once we could do that bare minimum groundwork, I feel comfortable starting to saddle a horse. I was pleasantly surprised, as was the owner, that first time with the Western saddle, he didn't really do anything uh, extra, no bouncing around and bucking. It was nice. <clears throat> There's a lot of times where people want to reference this as, you know, a Western saddle and that's because, or a roping saddle. And for me, these saddles, I'm calling it a foundation training saddle because there's so much extra that can go on and prepare the horse for with a good foundation where they get used to front and back cinches, where they get used to strings, saddle strings, and extra leather tickling them. We could see there that freshly saddled and cinched, the backing got stiff. The nose and neck got stiff here. So it took a little extra encouragement for him to soften his nose and neck. These are just little things with these exercises that I'm sharing that I use. They're about measuring where we're at and how do things change. So that was a measurable change that he got a little bit stiff there. Now he's licked and chewed and it got softer. Okay, so now I'd want to be able to go through the bare minimum list with the saddle on. For what we're gonna do today for video's sake, we're gonna go through and just look at the walk track canner on the circle here. And can he be soft and not bothered by the cinches at all? So we can see a little difference in how he moves his head and neck. 
There we go. Now, as training progresses and things go, you can see that how much up we're getting in the head and neck. So I'm keeping a bit of feel in this rain till he wants to relax that down, 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 okay? Instead of up, up. So this is our third day saddling. Like I said, we just came off of the weekend. So there's a change. He starts to reach that nose more forward and down. There's a change again. There's a change again. Oops, way. Where he can start to relax that head and neck in motion. I'd want to see that come through all the way before we move on to what's in the plan next. Okay, I mentioned while we were kind of introducing where we've been and what we've been doing in this video that we've been tying them around. That's something you've seen me do if you've watched the series with Cisco, and it's something that's gonna give me a tell on where's a horse get if they feel trapped with a feel on their face and being asked to move. There's a little breath. We're starting to see that head bob down. Again, this is learning to re, there we go. There's kind of that change we were looking for. Good boy. So that I'd want to see him be able to move like that a little bit to the left. Notice with that little flutter of the flag, it was much easier for him to relax his head and neck down. Good boy. There's a start. Again, I'm using my pointer finger to push that lead rope forward and down. There we go. We start seeing him come a little more through his whole body. There we go. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Okay. So we like that change. Now we're gonna check our cinch here. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. And then we're gonna go to uh, burpee. So we'll now have behind the horn. I like teaching this at first without the saddle on because you can't just pull on the rope and pull the horse around with that leverage point behind the horn. So we worked on that with him. Now that he's learned that, to have that little leverage point where I can put a little firmer pull, that challenges the horse to be more committed to keeping the softness. But I wouldn't do that until they already had the idea and had learned what does that yield mean and that they can do it. Then I would challenge it. See here, I can lean my weight into that and kind of put a pull on him. You can see how much the front end moved around that turn. That comes from that bit of brace where he's bracing against that feel. Again, these exercises just help tell us where the horse is at so we can understand and then make educated decisions about where to go from here. Yeah, so I stepped into his hip and gave him a little to say, hey, you could have got moved around there. You're late, technically. Ah, so now he's starting to offer a little more softness. 
and getting around there in a little timelier manner. And when I go to step to him, he's like, I ain't letting you get my butt. Again, building commitment. Got to have something to work first. See, and I don't have to pull any harder. I can let that rope slide to maintain the pounds per square inch before then I give them a little more oomph. There, and he tried a little harder to get his feet around. Now in the process of doing that, he put his head in the air. He's like, okay, well you hustled your feet a little bit more, but I didn't love your head in the air. There's a little better nose neck. There's a more thoughtful and fluid turn. So then we'd go back to the left side and get that. And we shouldn't be surprised by this little more stiffness in his neck. We encountered it right away after we saddled when we asked him to back. So now by being patient, we took care of that stiffness. Look how much easier that side got. It wasn't about the movement. It was about what was in his brain that he was holding a little tension there. Okay. I'm going to come up here by you guys and switch to this 12-foot rope. <clears throat> We're going to use this 12-foot line to tie him around. This is one of those things, I've talked about it in other videos, the Cisco series. I can be very villainized. Oh, Jake Beerenbaum, you're a bad man. He tied his head around. Oh. We're saving this horse by making sure that we can get into all those spots and saving ourselves from having to find out what happens when he feels trapped with the feel on his face and asked to move his feet. So we go behind. Behind the seat. Helps having the Cheyenne roll because it creates a point that holds the rope. First day that we did this, kind of had to get it there while he was in motion because he was not able to stand still and bend. Okay. So in the process, we've kind of taken care of teaching him to stand still and bend and get him to realize how to keep some softness in that rope while in motion. Now, when it's hooked there, he's in charge of the slack. I can't screw this up because he's responsible. Shouldn't be my job to take and release all the time. It's the horse's job to release themselves. Hey, bud, good job. So I want them to find that relax at a standstill. And this is a great way to remove the human out of it. Now, once he can do that relaxed and stood still, then I'd ask him to be able to do it in motion. You don't want this too short that he can't find comfort, but you don't want it too long that he could get his nose the other side. Again, when we showed this with Cisco, I talked a lot about this is something that's a trainer, not for you to just try at home. Well, would you look at that? Would you look at that? So on Friday, good boy, it took him quite a few goes to get his feet organized to take the inside lead and to be able to do it pretty relaxed. He right away was like, I got this, took the lead. Okay. His owner stood back and she goes, oh, it's okay. I can't hardly watch. Okay. Really made her nervous about what would happen. I think she said, this is my biggest nightmare. And she got to see 
What has he been learning to do for himself? See, he's taking care of himself now. It's not about me having to save the day. Just because I can be his Superman doesn't mean I need to. Hi, buddy. That was so good. So we saw him be able to just go out there and catch a walk trot canner very quickly and organize his body. We saw him bounce from a uh, left lead to a right lead, so he's going to have nice fancy lead changes quite easily. But it didn't take a lot of time or any energy or pressure from me to support him in that. I just stayed out of the way and patient and then made sure to be there with kind words and reward when he made it. Again, look at him standing still. That's such a big change from the first session where he had a hard time with that. And for him to find the stretch through his neck and the compression on the different sides was a big deal from where he came from with his impingement that he had to have that surgery for. Okay, so now what they learn here is to take the shoulders out and away. You're so fancy. So his nose comes in while his shoulder steps out. That makes room for this body to get organized. Good boy. Good boy. And how quickly does he find stand still and relax? There, it took one circle, no big deal. Okay, no big deal. I am thrilled with that. <clears throat> Now, the only things that have changed since his session on Friday, remember he had this acupuncture work, so we know that can help his body feel better, which can help him get more organized. That's exciting. Okay. And then we also know that uh, we're going to have the hocks done. That'll continue to help him feel better physically. All right. That's where we've been. And in a short amount of time now, I've been able to show you a whole week's worth of work to build him up to all of this. We're gonna do a little progress now on what's next. <clears throat> Where we're gonna go is I wanna do, I've got one of my stock whips out here. So we're gonna just make a little different kind of noise. We've taught him with the um, flag what to do. I know that Tick is a little more comfortable with the stick and the string uses that tool a bit more than the flag. So it doesn't surprise me that he's putting it all the pieces together using the stick and string. I have not used the stick and string. I've just been using the flag. I haven't needed the string to touch his butt, but I like to see him reading my body language and be able to put this together that it doesn't mean anything different. Okay. And I would just build this up to get it where it's a harder and a harder thing. Okay. Oop, it's a sloppy one. There we go. Good. And I'm just doing one and one and one. Okay, then we'd want to build that up. You'd have to have the skills to do one and two. One and two. One and two and three. And where's the line where he goes, I can handle two, not three. So you could come back to two, okay? And you can approach and retreat sequentially. So try to not make him move, but just flirt with that line and then progress it a little bit at a time. And then could you have really good timing that you catch it and release right when he puts his head down so that you make sure that's the answer, okay? So 
that was quite simple, but just something that I wanted to test and see, could, could we try and bother him? Okay. Could we set him up to get startled and what would he do? And then the other tool I brought out is a little longer flag with a little plastic baggy end. And this can be that much shushier and louder and different than the heavier weight flag that I started with. And so this has the potential to create some bother. And it also, because it's so long, I can put it all around him versus him just seeing it in front of him. So I'd wanna start with caressing his bubble, his personal space. And could I just move this around there to kind of read how are you gonna handle as I bring this in, okay? And just from all the work we've done already, he's like, yeah, I kind of know an answer, put my head down. So then I could just start by rubbing him at the withers and then up his neck and then up his neck further. The curiosity comes out, we love that. Where he starts touching it with his nose. Good boy. And then could we touch him on back? Now, because of the way this stick is, good. I can flutter it up and down and side to side, up and down and side to side. There, so we drew his attention, but I didn't ever let this get closer to him. And I would just start shushing it harder and harder around him to see if I couldn't draw any of those explosions. Good, good boy. And we got some minor bother, but I love that he's not taking any of that too personal and he's not getting sucked into maybe he needs to do more, okay? We could build this up to then starting to keep some contact with him at distance where I can touch him with the stick while he's out there. Tap, 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 tap on his butt. And so now this is some of the first that we've worked him around on the 12 foot line. I don't want to do a ton. We know we're going to have his hocks done at the end of the week. But this is just to show that he can really start to read the difference in my intention, meaning move and reading pressure versus things that are not going to run into him. So things he doesn't need to be bothered about. It's just happening around him. So if I start fluttering this over his head, does he need to worry about that or not? And I like that he's considering stepping to me to kind of come in here for comfort. Again, we give a lot of credit for uh, Tick Maynard's work with this horse for months and months. And we're kind of now getting to come in and enjoy the benefits of that and then help get the horse back going after his medical stuff. Where we'll go from here, before I start riding this horse, I want to challenge him with one of the really hard things, dragging a tarp. So I want him to be able to wear the tarp tied to the saddle and drag it behind him where he can start to feel chased and worried and see how can he hold himself together. And we're going to build that up over a few different sessions of being around it while it's being drugged, following it while it's being drugged, to eventually wearing it and having the rope behind the horn where it feels like it's chasing him and he'll learn to stop. We have a whole series on that over on pa uh, Patreon, hashtag shameless plug. You wanna go check out how we have built that up. It's part of our Handy Horse, Handy Human series. So we got a whole educational series about that kind of stuff on Patreon. It's a great spot to stop uh, as we did a little bit of progressive, but then we also got to see the quality improvements of some of the things we've already been doing and catch you guys up on the progress of Fenwick. All right, we'll keep bringing you along on this journey and uh, we've got lots of other 
series on different project courses we've done. You have Remy, we have Cisco, and we'll continue to keep you updated on all the different horses that we are helping out here at Pear Tree Ranch. Hey, I'm Jake, this is Fenwick at Pear Tree Ranch, and we'll see you next time.